Okay, hi everybody. Um, I thought I'd do a quick video to help you with next week's work. So this is today's Thursday. If you look on Thursday the 7th, um, if you look on the uh, website, next week's work has already gone on. Um, so I thought I'd go through a few things. If you look at the timetable this week, there's only your spellings, I think, which is in red. So that's what you really, really need to do. And if I've got time, I'll, I'll do another video about the, the spellings. Um, the rest of it for English and maths is in yellow. But I still think you should have a go um, because actually the wolf work is a really good opportunity for you to practice some of your grammar and punctuation. And um, I'm going to just go through with you. If you go and if you look at the spag mat again, um, I'm looking at the second sheet, um, the second one, along so like the sort of the middle, middle one, um, and I'm going to go through that with you now to help you understand a few of the phrases. I'm also going to be going over adverbial phrases with you um, and. Um, uh, conjunctions and subordinating conjunctions and coordinating conjunctions <laughs> okay so if you've got the mat if you've got the spag work in front of you if we look at a and it says complete the table by turning these adjectives into adverbs what you need to remember is that an adjective describes the noun and the adverb it's there, the clue is there for you. It adds to the verb. It describes, it gives more information about the verb. So with the adjectives, um, happy is the first one. So the happy clown, the happy clown. Um, and the happy clown is juggling happily. Juggling is the verb and happily is the adverb. It describes how he's doing it. So they've given you that first example there. Gentle. Now the general rule with adverbs when you're um, changing them to adverbs is that you add ly and you can identify the adverbs in a sentence because they're the ones that end in, L in ly, usually, okay? There are a few exceptions. Um, so the other thing you have to remember is the spelling rules when you add the adverb, the ly. So gentle. You take off the um, E and you just add a, a Y, gently. Um, true, you take off the E and you add L-Y. And frantic is frantic alley, A-double-L-Y, like accident and accidentally, last week's one, um, you might remember. So I've kind of given you the answers to that. <laughs> so have a go, choose some other adjectives um, and then make them into adverbs. Okay, so that's the first one. B is write a definition for each of these homophone words. Now homophone, homo means one and phone means sound. So it's Words that sound the same, but they've got two totally different meanings. So here we have peace and peace. What do those words mean? If you're not sure, get a dictionary and have a look. I'm not going to do it for you. Okay, C. Now, this is a subordinating conjunction. Now, listen. A subordinating conjunction joins two parts of a sentence. Your main clause and then your subordinate clause. Your main clause makes sense on its own. Your subordinate clause is part of the sentence, but if you took it out of that sentence, it would not make sense on its own. It would need more information. So if we look here, um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you another example. Um, bees, I've got a book here, so I'll go from this. Bees come to our garden. There's a subordinating conjunction. There are lots of plants they like. So bees come to our garden is the main clause. It makes sense on its own. There are lots of plants they like. It doesn't make sense on its own. What word needs to come between those two parts of our sentence so that it makes sense? Bees come to our garden because there are lots of plants they like. Because is our subordinating conjunction. Other subordinating conjunctions are, so because, as, so, 
if, although, despite, unless, when, after, before, while, since, until, during, once, where. They are subordinating conjunctions. That's a long, long list. Um, you will get to know these, don't worry. Um, so, look at the sentence. Dolphins breathe oxygen. Subordinating conjunction. They are mammals. Many people believe they are fish. Subordinating conjunction. They live in water. You need to add a subordinating conjunction there to make those sentences um, full, in case that they make sense. Okay. Right, so this one, can you invent a di so D, can you invent a direct speech sentence that Ben, the boy in this picture, might be saying? If you want to go a bit further with this one, do the dialogue, which is on the third slide, if you go down. Um, do a dialogue, dialogue, dia means two, so it's a two-way conversation. You need to be using the correct punctuation. So if someone is speaking, you need to be using these. Okay, speech marks. Okay, and they go around the bits that are speaking. Okay, have a go and make this interesting. Make it an interesting dialogue. Don't just do one sentence. Try and do a two-way sentence. What's Ben saying to the girl and what's the girl saying back? How is he saying it? So you could say, open your speech marks. What are you listening to? Comma, end your speech mark asked Ben, comma, then use your adverb, asked Ben, mm, nosily, maybe, or he asked, um, I don't know, I can't think of one on the spot. Okay, so you just add an in, <laughs> you could do it better than me. And then full stop, Ben asked, comma, adverb, Ben asked, comma, nosily, full stop. Open your speech marks, new line, because it's a new person speaking. Blah, blah, blah. Um, I'm listening to some um, Dua Lipa. Full stop. No, 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 sorry. Comma. Speech mark. Um, replied Donna. Full stop. Or you could add an adverb. Okay. I don't know who Dua Looper is, I've got no idea. Okay, you can make that so much better than my example, just thinking of that off the top of my head. You can make that much, much better than, than me. Okay, um, section E, fill in the missing word, a or an. Now you should be able to do that quite easily. Okay, it will probably come to you quite naturally if you read it aloud. And then F, Mr. Whoops, has been juggling with his letters from one of his year three spelling words. Can you spot what it is? One has been done for you. The letter starts with, the word starts with A. Can you think you have to spell out those letters to make a word? You have to have a look. If you're not sure, put the letters around in a circle. That often helps you um, and see if you can see what the word might be. I'm not going to tell you what it is. Okay, so that's that's that sheet done. That's your spag work done. Now, so we've talked about the subordinating um, conjunctions. Um, your coordinating conjunctions are a bit easier. Um, they're mainly and, or, but, or so. Um, so for example, um, um, it was a really sunny day, but it was raining or it was a really sunny day but it was cold but's a good conjunction i call it a good news bad news conjunction so you've got your good news of your sentence but and then your bad news of your sentence that's um what i use but for it's you know good news bad news or bad news good news um so and or but so they are your coordinating conjunctions let me give you an example um oh, coordinated conjunction um no 
I can't find one. I have to, I can't think off the top of my head. I'm not very good at thinking off the top of my head, guys. Okay, now when you do your wolf work, um, you will need, it's asking you for an adverbial. Now the adverbial, and I just, I never know what that is. I'll be completely honest. I really struggle with the adverbial. So an adverbial phrase tells you more about the verb. Um, so I'm just looking at the wolf work. If you've got that in front of you as well, the wolf work, and it's got seven questions, um, depending on what level you're at, you can have to just have a go at the first three questions or you can have a go at all of them. Um, and then if you carry on down the sentence work and it says, uh, sentence, uh, create five sentences about the wolf picture, but there are some rules for your sentences. So the first sentence must contain a conjunction. Well, we've just talked about those. Sentence two must contain an exclamation mark. Sentence three must contain inverted commas, speech marks, so there must be some speech. Sentence four must contain an adverbial and sentence five must contain all of the above. So the adverbial, let me give you some examples. The adverbial tells you more about the verb. It tells you how, why, when or where an action is done. Um, a fronted adverbial is often followed by a comma. For example, yesterday, comma, hua, I went to the shops. Okay, so yesterday is your fronted adverbial. An adverbial, adverbial phrase, um, let's give you an example here. A swan has made a nest beside the river. The adverbial phrase, I can't say it, adverbial phrase in that sentence is giving you a bit more information about where the nest is. So a swan made a nest beside the river. That's your adverbial phrase, beside the river, because it's giving you a bit more information about where it was made. Okay, so remember that adverbial phrase tells you more about the verb, um, and it tells you how, why, when, or where an action is done. Okay, so I really hope that helps. I'm sorry it might be a bit garbled. Um, but you know you can keep coming back to these videos re-watching them have the work in front of you that's what you need otherwise it won't really make any sense okay good luck if you're stuck or you've got any questions um, ask mum or dad to um, give me a text and I'll try and help you okay take care bye